All right, welcome back into another edition of All 22 as we look back at the Rams game for the Green Bay Packers, one that they won 20-3. to Only six incomplete passes for Jordan Love, so a lot more positive plays this week, too, than what we had last week. So the first play that we're going to start with, it's third and 17, 20 seconds left in the first half. Packers are up 7-3. to They're trying to march down into field goal range as they... Um, you know, try to make it a two score game. So it's third and 17. And ultimately this ends up in being a catch for Romeo Dobbs to pick up a first down. So we got to see here, uh, Packers have three to the top of the formation, one to the bottom, which is the quarterback's left as we look at it here. And uh, I'll just let it play and, and you let me know what you see here. Okay. So ends up making the catch there to kind of the bottom of the screen. So what I really okay, so liked about this play. Okay. Typically, when you have trips to the top, it's not designed to go down to Dob. So I'd have a hard time believing that he is the primary receiver. If you look up top, I mean, the throw really, I know it's third and 17, but if you look up top to Musgrave, mm-hmm. Um, that was probably the throw. My guess is it's third and 17. He came off the right side to go to the primary and just turned it to a one-on-one, which is what we've been talking about on the air for weeks. You're not going to scheme guys open anymore in week eight. You have to win individual matchups, and this is exactly what happened with Dobbs. Runs a good uh, good route, takes it to 18, back to 16, knows the sticks, and picks up the first down. Big play in the game. Yeah, I, 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 what I really liked about this play too is it's one where I mean, it's a it, this is a long throw true, as you can see. I mean, and yes. he's going from the you know middle of the field all the way to the sideline. This is one where I feel like Jordan just because he had to, he kind of ripped it and let it let it loose a little bit, and that's something that we've been asking for him to do over the last how many ever weeks. I think one of the most positive things this week is the coaching staff. If you watch AJ Dillon here, chips. He doesn't get much of a chip, but he kind of feeds them. Is that Yash or is that uh, Walker? Uh, it's, uh, it's Yash at this point. Yash That's is Yash, still in the game. Okay? Mm-hmm. So he protects them a lot like they're going to have to do with T.J. Watt this week is just give him a little extra attention. Now, the one thing I would coach A.J. Dillon on, once he commits to the inside and you you're, you can't help him anymore, get into your route. Yeah. He, See he's how he chase after- chases a little bit? Don't chase. But that's a little thing, and, and Dylan should know that. He's been around here longer than that. But when you're looking for protection, I mean, when you're looking for perfection, that's one of the things I would critique him on because the quicker he gets out, that's another defender he can pull away and keep that throw a lot cleaner. Uh, our second play that we're going to look at here um, comes later in the game, and these are going to be two back-to-back plays that we're going to watch here, Chew. We can start with the first one. But I think that – Quite possibly, these might be the best two back-to-back plays that Jordan Love has made all season long. Because you start with a catch here to uh, Dontavian Wicks, followed up by a Musgrave catch. So this is second and four, just a little play action, and they end up with a little sidearm, you know, throwing it up the field there to Wicks. Like, that's just, to me, one of the better, just kind of an in-rhythm play that we haven't seen out of the Green Bay Packers a lot this year. That's just the only my critique on this play. If you go top to bottom, is uh, Christian Watson has to clear that out. Okay, he has to know he's not getting the ball. This play would be a lot cleaner if he got on his horse and cleaned it out, and it would give uh, Wicks a bigger window to throw because that corner, if you look, almost falls back onto the play. That should never happen. So, so the looking at this corner down here. here. Is, this this is one of the plays where you have to fall on the sword. You know you're not getting the ball. You have to sacrifice yourself for your teammate and get out of there. Now, let me just look at the back. Is this the same play? Yep, same play. So just a little play action. Remember, we, okay. Gabe, remember we talked about um, last week the route by Musgrave where he was in the flat but actually went up the field and it took yeah. too long? Watch the Deguara here, where he's just all speed, get to the flat, to hold that flat defender to open up that window behind Wicks. Yeah, because he draws that line back. What's the difference in this? Because the flat defender has no chance to fall back into the route because he's so quick. 
You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. He's got to he's got to make sure, and he he's trying to keep an eye on Jordan Love here. And we're talking right. about this defender right here, but he's got to keep an eye, and he's okay. I got to get all the way out there, and that just flattens him out to to open up the hole there for Wicks. My biggest coaching point is if you watch Rot- Watson run right there, I would say, are you running full speed? Is that full speed? So we'll the guy back almost falls back into the play. So when Lafleur talks about, hey, we're making mistakes here, that's a coaching point. That's not full speed. That's that's dialing it down, and this guy almost if, if the flow if the throw is a little errant, and Wicks tips that up in the air, that's a pick. Yeah, and that would be it. So with Watson, do you think that just kind of happens with young guys? Like, oh, I'm not getting the ball here, you know? Because you're right. Like we've seen him run at full speed. That doesn't look like full speed. That's not full speed. And and that's you know what that falls on the coach. The coach is the one that's got to call him out and say, hey, come on. That's not full speed. We all have to do this. Wix is going to have to do it for you at time where he's got to sacrifice and run full speed. You got to do it for him. And that's how teams become. That's how offenses become really good. So first and 10 now, early fourth quarter. Packers are up 10-3, trying to march the ball down the field. And this is the next play, the very next play. And there are very few times this year, too, where I can remember just back-to-back good chunk plays for this offense, especially through the air. And that's what happens here. So you just had the big catch there for Dontavian Wicks, and now you're going to get a Musgrave catch here on first down. Musgrave lined up, lined up to kind of the bottom there, running all the way to the top, and you just get a good throw from Jordan Love to complete that pass. Yeah. So, so this back, back in the day, the this would this formation would simply be called West Right, okay? Like that's just good, clean pocket to throw from, and a good it ball is. to to throw it up to, and a big athletic tight end, and just letting him my, go make a play. My only question right here, Gabe, if you look at the play and you look at Kraft here, mm-hmm. this almost leads me to believe that Kraft was the number one read because why? It's almost like a delay. Sure. Like, I don't understand what he's doing there because normally Kraft is on his horse trying to get across the field. We call that a shallow cross going. Because look at all this real estate right in here. Yeah. So okay. I would say that that the ball was really meant to go to Kraft on some type of delay. But Jordan makes a good throw. The only thing I'd tell about Kraft there is to get away from that linebacker a little higher and take that just up a little higher because once again an errant throw there that guy's got a chance mm-hmm. you know you can take a and look at coaching that linebacker if, you know because this is how guys become good what did that linebacker do good do wrong he looked back at the quarterback which he should never do you could see it from the from the from the wide shot but if that linebacker doesn't look back at the quarterback see him right there yeah he loses sight of him that's not the throw yeah, because he's trying That's to keep why an he's eye out. Keep that, keep that a little higher. That when it comes to that play right there, which is called an over out, uh, there's really no set set depth. It's more just find a hole. Yeah, but it's a big uh, play. Good play in the game. Yeah, big play in the game. And again, we're we're kind of going with some of the more positive plays because there were only six in completion. So later, um, later in the game again, early fourth quarter, Packers. Um, trying to capitalize and, and really put this game away. This is a play that I just think that... Gabe, Gabe, we, Gabe hold on. Can you go back to that one more time? I just... Yes. Because I talked about it with Christian Watson clearing out. Let's watch Wicks because as, as I watched that play, seems like that corner could have had a chance to fall back on it too. Let's see if Wicks is running full speed here. So Wicks gets out there, turns the corner. He kind of slows down. I mean, is that full speed? I would, say, full speed? I would say early it is, but then he you can see him just throttle down and kind of look back. So it looks like he's busted it off the line here and now right there. When he looks back at the quarterback, he slows things down. But th- these are little things, Gabe. You just look at it. What if the throw is a little bit errant and Musgrave taps that ball into the air? Yeah. Because Wicks is dogging it here, that corner has a chance to pick that ball off if it's an errant throw. So these, I know it's nitpicking. But this is the de- this is the difference between teams winning by three and losing by three. Yeah, it's 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 all really important stuff. So Wicks did end up having a big day, and he ends up being the one that I want to take a look at here on this uh, on this next play. Uh, just got to cue it up here. But 
This is a type of play, Chu, that I want to see more of from the Packers yeah. this year, just because this is just such a it's it's a quick little out route, get the ball out. Just boom. an out route, yeah. Yeah, it's just it, it just all seems so simple, and it all just kind of comes together really quickly. A good quick timing play where Jordan has the ball, hits the top, gets it out, throws a good ball, and you move the chains. The, like, this the is the play. That, this is the yeah. play that just has been missing, I think, for the majority of the season, at least in my eyes. But back in the day, this was bread and butter to us. It, you know, it's it probably had an 85% completion rate. It's an easy throw um, for a quarterback. My only critique on Wicks here, see how he rolls it? You can go from the wide view. Yep. Okay. What you do when you're running routes like this, you want the stem is called your first 10 yards. You want to make it look all the same. So see how he's kind of rolling things? All the rolling does is it limits – your window to the sideline. So if just picture him putting it in the ground and coming more between the hash in the numbers and then rolling it over hard, it just gives that quarterback a little bigger window to throw into. He kind of rolls it here. See how he rolls it? Yeah. And then he doesn't need the stutter on the top. He can roll that over because the, the DB is giving him a big enough cushion. This is just a coaching point. If I was coaching receivers, that's what I would tell him. Because his little stutter step allows, if you look at the top of the route, the stutter step allows that DB to close a little bit quicker where he doesn't need to. So it's just, bam, put your inside foot in the ground, roll it over, and it's a much easier catch. Yeah, but that's just again we we've, we've talked about what's the identity of this team, what's a, what's a play that they can run. You mentioned yes. bread and butter, like this yeah. this to me is something that we need to see just a little bit more consistently out of the Packers. Oh, quick ten yards, all right, let's go. Uh, yeah. And the last play that we are going to look at today, big guy, uh, we are going to look at the big pl- catch by Christian Watson. Just I, I wanted to take one of these big plays and just kind of take a look at it from what you know in terms of you know what. Because it still feels like the ball's underthrown a little bit on this uh, on this play here, but at the same time they still end up making the big play for Christian Watson as he went up and, and was able to get it. But I, I don't know if that ball needs to be closer to the sideline and it it becomes an easier throw. But I would love to hear your thoughts on this uh, big thirty seven yard catch by Christian Watson. Uh, no, that's the right area. He's he's essentially running a high corner route. Um, it's underthrown, but if you look, look at Jordan Love's footwork here. He kind of feels the the uh, pocket collapsing a little bit, so he can't uncork that. My thing is, and we talked about it, I don't know, last week or on the air, it's throwing guys open, not waiting until they get open to throw the ball. So that ball could have probably came out a little bit earlier when he's coming out of his cut, because receivers will find it. They'll find the ball. Um, that would be my only critique. Now that that's not that's not an uncorked throw though. Yeah, I would agree. When, when you're running a corner route, you, you don't uncork it. That's that's um, that's kind of a field throw, which I, it's you know it's a little underthrown. But the only thing he's got to uncork it on are nine routes, whether pure all go. So this is not really a bad throw. My only thing about the throw is he could have took some air off of it. Okay. There's a little too much air on it. I mean, that should be more of a rope because the safety does almost come over and and, and take a play. Not make a play on it. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, you see you know, here with uh, with Love at the top and he just kind of, it's again, it just kind of floats on him a little bit. And that's what kind of takes Watson back toward the middle of the field. So so that's the right spot for that throw. Cause that's the right just, spot. But just yeah, he as, threw it a little late. He threw it a little late. Okay, because just as as a fan, right, like as somebody who, who you know, played high school football, that's as high as I ever got. Like yes. to me, I think that throw should be more the sideline. But that's this is why I want you to do this, because to me, it should be out more here where that ball sure. just kind of sails back to the middle of the field, which makes Watson have to well, adjust Jordan, to make the catch that he does. Jordan Love has that option to throw it to an area, not so much the person, which is what he should have done here. My critique would be, A, you got to throw it earlier. And B, you can't get as much air under it. That should be more of a rope. And let the receiver adjust to the ball. If you need to, there's no set way to throw it. You know, there's no, just because you say go to the corner or high school kids call it the flag. You don't have to go at the flag. You go to the open area and let Jordan Love throw you open. That's the one thing. Throw you open. Well, I. 
Yeah, I think it worked out. And again, I think there's a lot of things for Jordan to build off of. Now, it's going to be a tougher defense, tougher test this week, but look forward to doing it uh, with you again next week. Help the, thanks for helping us break down some of these plays, big guy. All right, buddy, anytime. That's the All-22 Episode 2.